Hey guys, sorry it took me a little while to get back. I uh, just want to take a little break, kind of burn myself out on this a little bit. and uh, But I will clean up the circuit after I get it worked out. I, I didn't quite finish it to where I wanted it. I, it's kind of what I was looking for, but I'll show you some of the uh, some of the effects I came across and some of the stuff that I got from it. Um, but first I'll show you this. Um, uh, the maximum voltage I've been able to get out of it, it's only been about mm, one volt. Um, with a uh, with a more caustic solution so I, I and unfortunately because I used that solution um, it uh, it did cr uh, heavily corrode uh, the bearing <laughs> which is unfortunate but you can you can see it doesn't have very much uh, doesn't have very much it has quite a lot of friction the wire just came out of course but it doesn't look too bad there but once it gets going, it, it does have a little bit of fr friction. So I'll probably try to clean this up and maybe get another VCR head bearing. Actually, this was my, out of the two VCR head uh, bearings I had. This was the crappy one that I actually busted a bearing on. Um, and uh, I think it was when I was trying to uh, attach it to another another axle that busted the, one of the bearings out. Um, so that was unfortunate, but... Uh, this is the the barrel. I took the water out of it right now. the 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 best um, solution that I came came up with was basically like um, um, uh, Epsom salt uh, and uh, let's see, Epsom salt. Two two tablespoons Epsom salt. Two tablespoons alum one tablespoon of salt substitute and um, and uh, one tablespoon of Rochelle salts. Now that's kind of the best solution I came up with, but the Rochelle salts made it very caustic, uh, or it, it, not caustic, but very, um, very uh, corrosive. And water itself is probably the Earth's best solvent, but uh, I also had this on top of it, but as of today, when I took it off, it, it busted off. The epoxy just came undone, and I actually just cleaned it up a little bit. There's still a little bit left over there. But um, how I attach the 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 uh, anode uh, uh, cathode was uh, was pretty simple. Is I just uh, I, I had this bushing that locked into place, has a set screw on it, and I put it on the top half, right, and um, you got the hook and and uh, you know usual cheapo stuff, Home Depot. <laughs> um, and then the bottom, I actually have running through it a a stainless steel rod that I drilled out. And um, my original setup, I was going to use these. As I'm dropping stuff, I was going to use these, and I went and many of you probably recognize what these are. And I was going to set set it up like this but the problem is my, I didn't have enough clearance for the coils I wanted to use and I couldn't find any coils to fit well um, I, I could find some to set out a ways but I only had one of these uh, I should say coil holders or coil winders or um, bobbins whatever you want to call it and I ended up using uh, little tiny bobbins and they just weren't working very well so um, I kind of scratch that plan but I will go back to back to it and that's one of the reasons why I just set up this this uh, road this motor platform and uh, what else oh and and on it because I've never I haven't seen anybody do this except for one video once and I can't find that video anymore which is unfortunate but uh, through it there is actually uh, two, two magnets on either side north south and there's a there's a piece of uh, of coat hanger which is what I ended up was ending up using uh, that runs through it uh, I would have liked to probably use this preferably or even better than this would be some type of laminated steel like what's in here what's in what's in the what what's in the shady pole motor coils um, and uh, I, I, I got this which is carbon steel but it uh, it's Magnetic domains kind of uh, memorize; they have memory, and it, because of that, it creates a lot of hysteresis and core saturation that are that unneeded and 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 do not do very good. And um, I'll probably work on some air core stuff too. 
you know, it's just kind of a motor platform. But I, I don't, personally, I don't think that there's ever going to be uh, too much of an over unity in the motor because you're doing a lot of, you're doing work. That's what a motor's for, right, is to do work. So magnets passing by coils, it creates force. Um, and so I don't know if you ever find any over unity in a motor, but, you know, it's, I hope somebody can prove me wrong. That'd be sweet. Um, so that's kind of the innards. Oh, and then uh, to avoid any type of galvanic um, action between a, the anode and cathode, the outside um, is, of course, the swag ink. And it's starting to wear a little bit because uh, it is resisted, resistive ink, but it's not, um, it's water resistant, but it's not uh, completely you know, impervious, especially when you start adding some caustic, caust more caustic solutions like uh, sodium chlorides and um, iodides and all kinds of salts, right? So, uh, and then, but the inside is just, this is just a carbon rod I took out of a D-cell battery. Uh, that, and that was to match it, or it might, it possibly is graphite, a graphite rod. I'm not sure. Carbon, graphite are very, very close in nature. They're pretty much the same thing <laughs> in, in a way. Um, so that's, that's pretty much that. Um, and then now I'll show you some of the, some of the stuff I've been playing with. One thing is, um, when I have the rectifier hooked up back to the source, oh, I, I'll go over this ultra capacitor bank too, which is completely ugly. And, uh, Hello. <laughs> and what it is is uh, I have all those alligator clips in because I couldn't find a mount to put those in. And so this is kind of shoddy right now. And I'll have to clean it up once I find some type of mount board to put it on. And I've tried soldering onto those center, center, um, uh, I guess it'd be cathode. Cathode is, is a negative, I believe. But uh, on, onto those that electrode and I couldn't solder anything. And so I... I can solder. I can solder onto the positive side, but not the negative side. So I just put some alligator clips to hold the little, the little rings in place, the contact rings in place, terminal, terminal rings. And it's kind of my makeshift way I went about things right now. Uh, you know, I don't have, I don't have a whole lot of funds and stuff, so I just make do with what I got. Uh, but uh, one cool setup about this is when I have this rectified. Like I was saying before, back into the input side. Um, if you notice, just off the spin, right? Just a little spin. The neons light up. Just a tiny little spin. So I'm, you're producing. I'm producing quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of potential, quite a lot of voltage just off of that. Uh, mo pretty much due to um, the coils all being in relative series, in, in a sense, and also uh, because these have both these are shady pole motors. They run at 240 are not 240, 120 uh, mains, and they uh, are, are designed to be more high voltage type of thing, type of setups. This one came from a microwave, and this one, I don't even remember. I think this is like a bl old blower motor, and, it, and I'm, I'm, I could be wrong, but. So, now it does lag the motor though, um, and as you can see, when I hook it up, essentially this is, this is just the, an SSG, kind of, sort of, uh, but it's a NPN, NPNP, and they they fire. Uh, the The idea is, I put these coils um, out of phase from each other uh, mechanically, or in, in kind of the vector of the eight magnet poles, the north, south, north, south. And um, the idea of it was that when one fires and when the coil collapses, the other one fires and ca and helps to carry, ba basically like trying to make standing wave, DC standing wave oscillations. And I, I mean, I kind of did it, but uh, you know, it was just it was just a kind of a challenge to try to design my own circuit that does what I wanted, which is <laughs> not something that I'm very I'm incredibly good at. But I'm learning, and that's the important thing. So that's why this pulse motor build off thing is pretty fun. And an awesome learning experience, but uh, I'll start it up, and it's not going very fast. Um, pulling a little more. I need to tune this this side again because I've been screwing with it so um, tonight. And uh, there's the build up and collapse of the coil right there, and you have your back spiking right. That's pretty typical of uh, most. Uh, 
back EMF type motors, transistor driven spiking motors. But here's what I was talking about that the standing wave. Um, is that uh, if we sync these up you can see that they're kind of out of phase and because that because they're out of phase like they besides on the transistor firings if I can they have um, nodes and anti nodes is, was, was the point it's not so clear right here but that's because I have um, this setup now if I take this off and we let the transistor fire properly um, or more efficiently I kind of turned it down to you know, bring it up to speed. Um, so this is going to go not very efficient, but pretty fast. Let's see here. So turning her up until the transistor has single fires. Coming up to speed. Now let's move these away so we can actually see what's going on. Yeah. Good, 200 millivolts. And almost there. That's probably this, the PMP side is not adjusted. There it is. Okay. So now, the uh, it's it's more in resonance. You can see the it's dropping on load and speeding up, um, and you can see the spikes on those standing wave oscillations. Right, that's that was the the hope is that that would occur, and it and it does. But um, I don't know what good it's going to do. You really, <laughs> I mean, it's cool that you get high voltage peaks, but what are you going to do with it? You know, it's just an instance of high voltage um, but it's cool and so that's pretty much my my setup and you can see what I mean hopefully you can see by what I mean by stand and it, it's still not quite the the, the uh, voltages aren't balanced out but um, you know you can see the nodes and anti nodes and, and a DC in my interpretation of a DC standing wave um, so or out of phase with wave so that's kind of uh it's kind of nifty i guess i, le I learned a, quite a bit about this and uh, what and you know just i didn't quite get where i wanted to get to um i i'm not sure if i'm going to finalize the circuit yet i'm going to play with it a little more and see if i can get anything better out of it um, but uh i will say that it's uh i've not bogged it back on you can see transistors not firing as cleanly but I will say that it was a great learning experience and uh, I I loved everyone's videos I mean everybody had something really cool so so much uh, so much information to learn from and stuff like that it would be cool to have uh, some solid state stuff and you know maybe continue on with like the Slayer competition or something like that or you know even it doesn't have to be a competition just just the fact that we communicate with each other and learn from one another is I think more than enough so um, I, I once I fi finalize this if this is going to be the most efficient way to set it up I'm going to play some resistor values and um, see if I can uh, get this a little more fine-tuned um, and then do some add-ons and stuff then I'll, I'll make a circuit if anybody I'll, I'll do a circuit diagram if anyone's interested uh, it's not too complicated to figure out I wouldn't think but if someone's interested in it then I'm more than happy to to drop a circuit diagram so uh, but anybody anybody who uh, takes the time to create something that's you know unique and has some type give <laughs> has some type of movement in life you know more power to you and uh, and I look forward to more more learning experiences like this guys so i appreciate it much love to you all and, and take care